Hello and welcome to the La Jolla Cosmetic Podcast. I'm Monique, your hostess, and today on the podcast, my guest is a little bit unusual. His name is Michael, and unlike when we've had patients on the podcast, he is the husband of one of our patients, and her name is Candy. And Candy came to see Dr. Swiston to have her breast implants removed, and that took place about a year ago. And then last month, Candy returned to have a second surgery to have fat transfer as a breast augmentation with the fat and then a lift. So we don't always think about husbands and partners and kind of what their perspective is maybe as much as in, you know, mostly we're asking patients what they feel, but, you know, having a surgery does impact the people around you. And so we are really grateful that Candy's husband, Michael's here today and that he's grateful or we're, excuse me, we're really grateful that Candy's husband, Michael, is here today and that we get to, you know, talk about that side of the story. So welcome, Michael. Thank you. Good to be here. So let's set up the story for us first. Um, did she get her breast implants before or after you met? She got them after we had met. We had uh, met... Um, I don't know, maybe a few months prior to we talked a couple of times and and uh, then we we didn't talk for a, a, a while. And then she reached out to me out of the blue and we started talking again. And then when I see her again, then she has uh, breast implants. So that's kind of the way it went. <laughs> so how long ago was that? Oh, gosh. 25 years ago, maybe. Oh, okay. Something like that. Yeah, so it's been a while. At what point, I guess, when did you start to notice that, you know, she was having them maybe impact her life or having, you know, that she wasn't really happy that she had the breast implants? Oh, I would say probably the last few years, anyway, she has started uh, commenting about different ailments uh, that were bothering her. You know, some headaches and some neck issues. Um, so yeah, I would say probably a good few years ago. And of course, you know, at that, you know, I'm just, you know, thinking, well, you know, it's, you know, she's just getting older, um, just kind of a natural type thing versus, you know, that the, the breast implants were causing it because it, it just didn't seem like that would be an issue, um, you know, in my mind. Mm hmm so I was and skeptical. Then, yeah. Did she right away start thinking there was a link or did that, like when, do you remember when she put that part together? Um, she just started looking into it, doing some research. And then I would say probably like the last year before she actually got the implants out, she really started to look into the, um, the, the breast implant uh, illness and um, just really saw other women that were going through the same things she was. And uh, she just knew, you know, then that, uh, you know, it was time to get them out. And so, you know, when I guess when she made that connection to, you know, this could be the cause. And so you said you were skeptical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was, uh, I was skeptical. I thought, well, it's gotta be something else. Uh, I just, it just, it just didn't seem like that could be, you know, the, the, the thing that was causing it. Um, but I'm certainly have changed my mind. So in the time leading up to her saying, you know what, I want to get them taken out. You know, was there a moment that pushed you over the edge where you said, yeah, go get it done? Or like, was there ever a change for you that, or you just thought, yeah, go, let's see if that helps. Well, I wanted to be supportive of her. Um, she had done a lot of research and she really felt like this was the, the way to go. Uh, even going into it, I was when she went into the doctor's office or to into surgery to get it done, I was, I was just, I was skeptical. Um, even after the things that I've read, you know, I was, I, I think part of it was that I was, uh, that I was 
scared for her that she was going to, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? That she was going to regret doing it and she'd be, you know, six months down the road or a year, like, oh my gosh, what did I just do? Um, but that, that was not the case, uh, at all. And she's been very happy with, um, the results. I've been very happy. I got a brand new wife. Uh, the, all the issues that she had, the headaches, um, the skin discoloration, um, some of the darkness around her eyes is gone. Her energy, um, her, her back and neck issues or headaches. It's, it's been amazing. It really has. I, I just, wow. yeah, I mean, I'm a firm believer, you know, if someone, you know, is having issues, this is something that they should definitely look at. Mm -hmm. Now, could you say, you know, I guess, describe for us what it was like maybe for you guys before she had the surgery, how it affected maybe your relationship or your life, like going out and doing things versus now? I mean, has there been an impact, I guess, directly on your relationship? Yeah, for sure. So when, you know, when we were young, um, you know, and she had the breast implants, um, she was not concerned at all about, um, I'm not going to say showing them off, but, you know, just wearing things that, you know, um, where she looked good in the clothing, but really the last, I would say probably five years or so, she was very self-conscious about them and didn't like how large they were. And, uh, so that part, you know, she didn't really like wearing a lot of, um, attire that hugged her tightly, uh, mm -hmm. because she just didn't want to stand out, um, you know, in, in that manner, you know, where people just, all they saw were, you know, her, her breasts, you know, she wanted people to see her, you know, other than that. And so, um, from a, and I know a lot of guys are going to, you know, they want to know, um, they want to know about the sex life. Let's, let's be honest. <laughs> they want to know, you know, how does it affect, um, yeah. you know, bef you know, we, bef you know, before the implants got out, I, I would say it was, you know, you know, average type sex, uh, life for a married couple, um, post surgery, um, she has been, uh, feeling so, so much better energy wise and, uh, wearing clothes that really, um, are flattering to her and clothing that she was so afraid to wear before. And, and she just feels very confident about wearing, uh, these types uh, of clothing where she didn't before. And then, um, her, libido is like freaking off the chart. So guys, well, if that's good. <laughs> that is a concern. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a nice problem to have. Right. Um, yeah. You know, well, for, for it a makes husband. sense, I guess, I guess it makes sense if you're not feeling well, you know, that yeah, makes your energy sick, you know, low. And yeah. then if you're not feeling super confident either, or feeling yeah. maybe some, you know, awareness that you're self-aware that, you know, she was feeling like they were too big. Cause I think, you know, we all go through different times in our life where we have different goals, you know, and when you're in your twenties, mm -hmm. you, you, you want to have a different look than maybe when you're in your forties and I don't know her age, but, um, you know, those things change and that's, and that's okay. But certainly, you know, her, it sounds like she's really like coming into herself with, and, and embracing maybe this new look that she has and maybe the yeah. new found energy no, too. Without a doubt. <laughs> yeah. It's uh it's just energy, you know, and I'm not just talking about, you know, libido wise, but just energy for life in general. It's just, she wants to go out and do things. Um, and it's just, it, you can feel it in, in the house. It's, mm -hmm. it's been amazing. And, you know, I, I, I've told her many times, I wish she would have done it years ago. Now, when you said that she was doing some research on her own and, you know, mm -hmm. once she came 
close to that? I mean, was she, were you doing that research with her or did she kind of just bring it to you? And, and, you know, what was your role, I guess, in that process? Yeah, she would, she would bring me the research. Uh, I, I did uh, a sur- surface level research, but nothing like she did. She went down some serious rabbit holes uh, regarding the, the breast implant illness and she would bring me things and, and, and examples of other women having the same type of issues. Uh, she was, she joined a couple groups on Facebook and that's actually how she ended up finding Dr. Swiston was somebody was talking about, um, the amazing job that he had done. And, and she had looked at other doctors as well and did research and, you know, we're, we're fully prepared to go outside the state if we had to, but, uh, you know, thankfully we, we found him great reputation, uh, within the community. And so, um, when we came in and talked to him, it was like a done deal because we could see that he gave a crap about yeah. us yeah. and her right. and was, um, believed in her, her, um, in the illness. And, uh, so we've been thoroughly impressed post surgeries, texting, talking on the phone, whenever he's, he's been, uh, at our disposal. And so it just been a wonderful experience. Well, that's so good to hear. And I think, you know, my own personal experience with him as a surgeon and he hasn't done surgery on me, but working with him, you know, he is so very, dialed in to every patient and knowing who they are, everything about them. And he genuinely cares. And, and you just, there's a connection that you can't fake that, I think. Um, Mm -hmm. So, and I think especially when it's something that maybe almost goes against the norm, the norm is everybody gets implants put in, nobody talks about getting them out. Mm -hmm. And so, and when you're, you know, man or woman, whether you're feeling like something's not right, you want to be heard. And, you know, you don't want to be kind of dismissed, like, oh, that's not a thing. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Go away. That's like the worst thing. And I think having a surgeon who will genuinely listen and care and say, yeah, this, this really could be something that is affecting you. um, I think that's such an important part because it is, you do feel like you're swimming upstream. <laughs> Everybody's going this way and you're going that way. And why am I, am mm-hmm. I crazy? Am I crazy to think that? Um, so once she was ready, okay. So she had her consultation with Dr. Swiston and were you there for the consult? Yes. Yes, I was. And you know, the other thing I had to, I had to look past that he was, uh, he was in the Navy. You know, I, I, didn't hold him against, hold that Are against him Marine? at all. I'm a Marine, yeah, I'm a retired Marine <laughs> officer. So that, that part, uh, you know, I had to look past, but uh, I got over it quick. <laughs> yeah. I've but yes, yeah, so I was part of the process. Uh, uh, well, that's good. I think that's important. I think having support, no matter what surgery or what, you know, big life event, it's nice mm-hmm. to have, you know, the support of your partner there. Um, so what was your first impression when you met him, other than the fact that he was... <laughs> in the Navy and not a Marine. Oh, uh, just, just like I said, uh, I just, I could tell right away that he cared, um, about us, not, you know, not just my wife, but us as a couple and, uh, thoroughly explained everything and, and was at our disposal when we had questions, we had his phone number and my wife could text or call at, at any time, literally. And uh, in fact, I think uh, the night that she had her surgery, I actually was talking to him on the phone at like 10 o'clock at night um, and he called me. So um, I I thought I was just very impressed with him uh, throughout the process, still very impressed with him. And uh, I just could not recommend him um, enough. Now, did you have certain things that you were worried about? go her going into that surgery and, and maybe, you know, did she have things that she was worried about and were they the same or different? Uh, yeah, I would say they were different. Uh, again, my, my concerns going in is, uh, and, you know, I was skeptical up until, you know, the last moment, even after, you know, speaking with Dr. Swiston and I was just, and I think maybe more fearful than skeptical that, that she was, going to um regret this decision 
that was that was really my biggest fear, and that she was just it was gonna just kill her mentally. And um, but again, afterwards, um, you know, we're just, just what what a great uh, uh, surprise, I guess, for lack of a better way of putting it, uh, just pleasantly surprised uh, of how everything's happened afterwards. Uh, for her, I, she was she had some apprehension going in uh, i think i think anybody getting that type of surgery uh even though she wanted to get it is going to have that uh, type of apprehension um you know, there's you know some tears uh um just wondering you know if she's doing you know the right thing and um you know and and i just you know try to reassure her that uh hey, you know in your heart this is what you know you want to do and and uh so she just, you know, we went for it and everything has been great. I would not, uh, there's, there's been, it's just, it's been great. It, it really has. And, and, uh, I recommend any woman that's having this, uh, type of issue to, you know, do your research. Um, but, uh, there's really has been no downside to this at all from a, from her individual standpoint or, or from a couple standpoint, it's just, it's been a great year, uh, since the surgery. So tell us about the day of her first surgery. What was that like for you? Wow. It was, um, it was a lot of work to, you know, take care of her. Um, you know, she had the drains that we had to, to drain every few hours. Um, she's in pain, of course, um, I got to see the bags that were inside of her um, and feel how heavy they were, you know, and I could, I could see why she was having neck issues because uh, she's, she's a small woman, um, small frame and the, those implants were just crazy. I, I, I'm trying to think, I think he had said they were like 500 or 600 CC bags or something like that. Oh, that's and yeah, yeah. Yeah. And there, yeah. And so th I could just see why something like that pulling on this part of your body would affect your neck. And, and so, you know, I felt, and as, and here's the other thing is that as she started getting better and I saw all those symptoms going away, I, f I kind of felt like crap because, you know, I was oh. so skeptical, you know, I felt bad, you know, that I was like, Oh, you know, you know, it's just this or that, um, do some exercises, you know, I, it was just, I just feel bad, you know, looking back that, uh, I kind of, um, dismissed some of the, those things. Oh, but back to the first day, back to the first day, it was, it was, there was just a lot, a lot of work to, to take care of her. And, um, but, uh, nothing, nothing, you know, crazy out of the ordinary. Were you, I, I was just thinking of this question, were you or she at all concerned that, like, what if I have the surgery and I don't experience any change to these symptoms? Was anybody thinking about that? Um, well, I, I had actually, you know, I thought it, it goes back to my skepticism in the beginning anyway, um, but I certainly had that those thoughts going through my mind, but, you know, I wasn't really communicating them with her. You know, I didn't want to put it out there. You know, I just wanted her to, to, um, uh, to recover, um, as, as quick as she could and, uh, and to help her along. And it's, like I said, it's been, it's been amazing one year. Now, do you remember at all like was it an immediate change with her or did it take a little while like how when did she start to t tell you that she felt different uh it was pretty soon after i would say within the first month anyway she started to experience uh or not experience some of the things that uh that were bothering her um you know particularly you know the headaches uh she was notorious for getting headaches that uh, I mean, just it happened so much that it was just like part of our life. Um, not to say that she doesn't get any headaches at all anymore, but they are like few and far between, you know, when she says, when she tells me she's getting a headache, I'm like, Oh, wow. You know, maybe you need to dehydrate or something, you know, like that. Not, you know, it's definitely not because of, not you know, chronic. the implants anymore. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it happens so much. 
it, it literally was just like part, Oh, well, mom's got another headache. Um, but now it's, it's very rare that, uh, she has headaches. The neck pain, uh, is gone. The, the back issues, they're gone. It's like I said, I've, I've got a new wife, not just physically, but mentally, she's just, just all in, you know, with, um, our relationship and just has tons of energy. You know, you know, I'm, I'm like, gosh, I, I have like a, a brand new wife. She's <laughs> like, like she has the energy today. of a, she has the energy of a 20 something. Oh, that's so cool. Um, yeah, it is. Now, since the, I alluded at the beginning to the fact that she had her surgery really in two parts. So she had mm -hmm. her explantation last year in February, mm -hmm. and now we're in March of 23. And she just recently had the breast lift and an augmentation with fat. So tell me, mm -hmm. you know, what was the thought process of splitting that all up? Did Dr. Swiston really dictate that? Did, is that something that she wanted to do? What was kind of the thought process behind that? So when we spoke to Dr. Swiston on, on the plan, you know, a, a year ago, um, he had recommended, uh, he did not recommend a lift at that time. He had said, let's see what happens uh, after a year. Let's see what happens with them uh, before we decide to do anything. And so he actually, I think it was like six, he said six months to a year. Let's see what happens. See, see how they, how they transform. So we did that um, because, you know, if you have, you know, something stretching your skin that much, you know, over the, you know, 25 plus years or so, you know, it's going to stretch out your, your skin. So she had, you know, some extra skin there that she wanted to um, get fixed and she just wanted to look more like um uh like she didn't have you know these huge implants in, inside of her in, of her mm -hmm. chest you know and that had stretched out her skin and and whatnot just kind of bring them up from down here to bring them up here <laughs> back where they used to be <laughs> yeah exactly back before where they the used to be and before kids <laughs> yeah yeah exactly so um we went back to him and he laid out you know what he could do and Again, 100%, uh, it's going to be a month tomorrow and couldn't be happier with, uh, with the results. Um, he, he had to, to do a lot of, pull out a lot of his tricks that, uh, that he knows. Those are his words um, to, <laughs> to get them uh, fixed because there, there was some complexity to, to her um, lift and the, the grafting of the fat. Um, but man, he, he did a, a great job and she's super happy with, uh, with the results. And again, she just feels it, it was like, kind of like the last piece for her to really, um, feel 100%, um, which is, which is saying a lot because again, that time from when she first had the surgery to this last one, she was already like crazy off the chart energy um just feeling like a million bucks um it was just this small tiny piece that she just wanted to 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 complete the whole the whole thing by you know just getting that just tightening up that area and uh she's just like over the moon and back oh, yeah it's it's great cool. yeah so now she's probably you know mostly healed right from the most recent surgery. I mean, it's been months, so she's still post-op in a way, but mm -hmm. you know, she's starting to be able to do exercise and things like that. Yeah. Yep. That's good. So was there anything that surprised you after either one of the surgeries that you weren't expecting? Well, um, not so much after the second one. Um, I just, I think after the, the second one, it was just, it just, it just looked good um, aesthetically, you know, it looked uh, much better getting it, getting that area tightened up. And she's super happy with that. Um, my, after the first surgery, you know, I can't emphasize enough how surprised and happy um, I was that 
her symptoms were gone and she was just a, a, a new woman. And it's really hard for me to, to underemphasize that or overemphasize that um, because it has been just completely night, night and day. And even people who haven't seen her in a while or they see her in pictures, they're just like, wow, you look really good. You know, what have you, what have you done? They can just see it, the energy that she, that she's putting off and the glow when we take pictures together. Uh, people are just like, wow, you just, you look really good. You look really happy. And uh, that, that part has been uh, surprising. Uh, Cause like I said, I was skeptical going in, but it really has. I, I would have, if, if I would have been on board earlier or known this was going to happen, I would have said, let's get them out 10 years ago. Now that you're through it and she's mm -hmm. through it, what advice would you give to someone and this is kind of a two-part question. What advice would you give to someone who has implants and is confronting the same challenge? And then what advice would you give to maybe their partner in this, you know, journey of, you know, deciding whether you want to keep them or, or take them out? Uh, well, I, for, on the female side, uh, I would, uh, definitely recommend if they're having these, uh, the illness to get, to get them out, uh, because it's really no way to live your life, uh, to be sick, um, for boobs. It's just not. And, um, on the husband side, I would, uh, tell them to, to be supportive, uh, trust the process and just know that, uh, you're, you're getting a new wife when she gets out and being sick cannot, um, present a, um, she cannot put her best foot forward in, in the relationship when she's not feeling good. And so that manifests in, you know, all sorts of aspects of your relationship, just from daily interaction to, you know, being intimate and, and whatnot. And so I, I think that, uh, the more support that the the husband or the partner can give, you know, to his wife or girlfriend, um, the better uh, she's going to feel about it. And uh, when she comes out of it, the support needs to be there um, so that she can recover uh, more quickly. And I, I am fully uh, invested in, and uh, believe in the, in the process and, and what it has done for my wife. And I, I have no reason to believe that it, it would not um, manifest itself into uh, other people's relationships as well. Now, what part as a person taking care of somebody who's just been post-op, and I know you're a Marine, so you can, you can do it all and you're <laughs> fine. But, you know, some guys I think are really intimidated by what, what do I have to do? How do I do it? I'm, they're like scared almost of taking care of somebody after surgery. So if you could describe for, for the audience, you know, what was that first 24 hours like? And, and then, you know, maybe a couple of days after surgery, what was, what does that look like? Well, the, at the office here, they give you, um, instructions, uh, paper instructions, and then they also go over those instructions, uh, with you. So it's not like they just, uh, wheel her out, you know, uh, in the wheelchair and dump, dump her off in the, to the car and, and tell you, thank you. Uh, they give you clear instructions on, on how to take care of her. Um, and it's, it's really not difficult. It's Marine proof. I, whenever something, uh, I want to tell, try to emphasize how easy something is, I just tell them it's Marine proof. So, cause <laughs> if a Marine could do it, then, uh, then anybody can do it. That's funny. Um, so that, oh, that's good. Cause I, I have actually been, I was filming a surgery one time and I remember the spouse of the person coming in and they just were so overwhelmed and I'm like, it's going to be easy. It's all right here. It's on yeah. the book, you know, but they yep. were just almost <clears throat> overwhelmed because they've got the emotional part of seeing their spouse or their girlfriend or boyfriend, mm -hmm. you know, po like in a gown and hooked up to things. And, you know, so sometimes people get a little weirded out by that whole thing and they're like, what do I do? And <laughs> so, um, it's yeah, nice it's, to know. It's, it wasn't, 
Yeah, it wasn't difficult at all. You, know, you just keep track of their medication, and you, you know, we I just had a little list of uh, a little piece of paper with the times that I gave her gave her medicine, and and really within probably a week or so, you know, she's almost taking care of herself at, at that point. Um, I mean, you still got to help her out with some things, but uh, you know, just real simple things. You know, she's pretty much taking care of herself, but it's it's well worth it. It's not like uh, it's uh, this daunting task that uh, uh, somebody can't uh, complete. And the award at the the reward at the end is, again, having just an an amazing, healthy and happy wife. And, you know, what they say, you know, happy wife equals happy life. Yeah, exactly. And now you've done it twice. So now you're a pro and you could, you know, write the book on supporting your spouse through surgery. Um, yep. So thank you so much for, you know, really being open. And and I heard this was actually your idea that you wanted to talk about, you know, what it's like from a spouse's point of view and, and um, j- just share. And I really appreciate that transparency to share for other husbands out there or partners who, you know, don't, you don't know what to say sometimes if you've got somebody saying, this is making me sick. And you're like, I don't know, is it, <laughs> you know, you're, you're where you, yeah. you don't know where to weigh in on the topic. It's not you feeling it. And so, um, you know, just your honesty about, you know, being with her throughout this process before, during and after, I think is so, so helpful for other people who might be looking at this surgery and it's becoming much more popular surgery just because I think one is maybe lifestyle, you know, you change over time and what you wanted at 23, like I said earlier, might be different than when you're in your forties or fifties. Um, Mm -hmm. but also, you know, for the percentage of people, you know, doctors, we do have some, um, podcasts that he has done and we'll put them in the show notes, you know, where he talks about breast implant illness and, you know, how many patients, has has he helped and how many patients i think he said he can count on one hand the ones who didn't feel different so for hundreds and hundreds of women they felt better mm-hmm. and if there's only a few that didn't then there's got to be some link even if it hasn't been scientifically proven it matters you know it matters for that patient and their family and um so you know that's i love that you've brought us into that fold of what, what, how it's impacted your life in a positive way. So thank you. Yeah, no worries. Uh, you know, I just felt like, uh, I felt like I was pretty much the, the average guy going into, um, something like this, you know, where their, uh, wife had, um, these, this breast augmentation that, uh, um, she looked good, um, with them. And, you know, the fear that, you know, I think a lot of guys would have is, uh, oh, my gosh, you know, those the boobs are going to go away and, you know, I'm not going <laughs> to be attracted to her and, or whatever. And I just felt it was really important to let other men know that, hey, just forget about that. It's going to you're gonna, it's going to be fine because um, my wife literally went from a double D down to like a uh, like a B, a B basically. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, just I, I just wanted them to to know that hey, everything's going to be okay, and the the woman that you get at the end after the surgeries is like infinitely better than the one that was miserable with the boobs, and it's it uh, it the house is so much nicer when um, she's not sick and not feeling like crap all the time and having headaches and neck issues, and so just not to be not to be afraid of it. Uh, to for her to, you know, to get the the explants, and that uh, everything's going to be okay, because I was I was afraid too, and yeah. I'm just like I just wish I had done it, or we had done it uh, several years before. Well, now you have many more years of your frisky wife. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> looking good, <laughs> feeling good. I mean, that's that's yeah. exciting. That's really exciting, and. um I really appreciate, like I said, that you coming on and telling everyone your story. And I think we're going to be um, sharing, uh, I think Gretchel's doing some filming with her. And so we'll have some 
links in the show notes with her before and afters and kind of see her transformation. So um, I, I thank you so much again, and I hope her healing continues as she's, you know, now getting to enjoy her new lifted perky B-sized breasts. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Take a screenshot of this podcast episode with your phone and show it at your consultation or appointment or mention the promo code podcast to receive $25 off any service or product of $50 or more at La Jolla Cosmetic. La Jolla Cosmetic is located just off the I-5 San Diego freeway in the Zymed building on the Scripps Memorial Hospital campus. To learn more, go to ljcsc.com or follow the team on Instagram at ljcsc. The La Jolla Cosmetic Podcast is a production of The Axis, T-H-E-A-X-I-S dot I-O.